Hello, I'm Anika from Made to Sew. Now welcome to the Copen dress making tutorial. Now in this class I'm going to be showing you how to make Copen, which is a free dress making pattern for a simple shift dress or top. If you haven't downloaded it already, you can download the pattern for free from my website and I'll pop a link to that in the description box below. You can print the pattern at home on A4 or US letter size paper or you can get it printed in A0 at a printer's or copy shop. So throughout this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you a step-by-step -step guide to create your dress or top. I really hope that you learn something new and that you end up with a professional looking garment that you can be proud of. Once again, if you have any questions or if you want help with fitting, then please do get in touch. You can email us at help at madetosew.com or you can join our Facebook group that we've created specifically for the Copen pattern so that you can hopefully all share your makes and inspire others. So let's get started. Now the first thing that you're going to need to do is to prevent the curves of the neckline from stretching. Now you've got two options when it comes to doing this. The first option is going to be to complete a stay stitch. Now a stay stitch is a stitch on the sewing machine, a small stitch that measures 1.5 millimetres. You're going to complete it in the seam allowance, but close to the stitching line. So if you're working with the seam allowance of 5 eighths of an inch, 1.5 centimetres, you're going to complete your row of stay stitching half an inch, 1.2 centimetres from the edge or raw edge of the fabric. So across the back, you're going to stitch the neckline. You're also going to do that for the front neckline and the other back neckline. You can back stitch at the start and at the end. Now, if you would prefer not to stay stitch, you can use another technique and you're going to need to either purchase some fusible interfacing or fusible stay tape. It can also be known as bias stay tape or bias tape. Now this is a fusible interfacing which is cut on the bias so it allows us to shape this around the curves of the neck. You're going to apply this to the wrong side of the fabric at the neckline, so the front and the two back. It generally comes in white and also in black. Obviously for this project I'm going to be working with white. Now you need to find the side of the interfacing or stay tape that has the adhesive and in my case it's the rough side. Now I'm going to position that onto the wrong side of my garment. Now the stay tape that I'm working with has a stitching line running through it and that must be positioned on the stitching line of my garment which in my case is 5 eighths of an inch 1.5 centimetres. So I'm going to position that on and I'm going to use the iron, heat and a little bit of steam to work that on. Now if you want to you're welcome to measure from the edge of the fabric to the stitching line on the interfacing just to double check that it is the desired distance away. Now, to work your way around the curve, you're going to need to pull ever so slightly on the interfacing. You don't want to be tugging at this, it really is just sort of like a, a firmness rather than actually a pull. And I tend to work with the iron and with a little bit of pull as I work my way around just like so. Now you'll continue working your way around until you've completed the front and both back necks. Once you get to the end you can simply trim off the remaining interfacing. Now if you don't have access to the stay tape that I'm working with here, please don't worry you can easily make your own. You can cut strips of interfacing Either use a knit or cut it on the bias so that you have the ability to stretch it around the curve. In terms of the widths to cut, I would recommend something between half an inch, 1.2 centimetres, and three quarters of an inch, 2 centimetres, depending on the amount of seam allowance that you are working with. This tape here 
measures half an inch, 1.2 centimetres. Now on to sewing the darts. This garment has two bust darts on the front and these must be sewn. There are also optional waist darts. If you choose to sew these, you will have a closer fit around the waist of the garment. There are two waist darts in the front and one in each of the back pieces. Now you should have the darts clearly marked onto your fabric with your chosen method. We're going to start with the bust darts. We're going to pin them and then we're going to sew them on the sewing machine. Now I'm going to be sewing my dart from the edge of the fabric along the legs to the point or apex. I'm going to position in my pins so that the two lines are one on top of each other and I'm going to go to the sewing machine. If you are new to sewing darts, I would recommend watching our step-by-step -step tutorial. Start with a back stitch and stitch along the drawn line until you get to the end of the dart. At the end of the dart, I would recommend sewing off. Don't back stitch here unless you're a really accurate sewer. Once you've finished sewing the bust darts on the garment, you're going to want to press them using an iron and some steam. I would recommend that you press them flat first and then press them over a curved surface such as a ham or a rolled up towel. This will mimic the shape of the body and you don't want to have any sort of creasing at the point of the dart there which is what the curved tool will help with. Now you're going to want to press them down towards the hem of the garment as if they were going down with gravity. The next step is to sew the waist darts. You have two waist darts in the front and two in the back. These are optional. If you choose to sew them, you will have a closer fit through the waist area of the dress or top that you are making. It's really up to you and the look that you are aiming for. If you're unsure whether you require the darts, a good method would be actually be to not sew them at this stage to create the dress but make sure that you have marked on their position and then perhaps you could always pin them in, baste or tack them in at a later stage when the dress is at the point that you can try it on so you can see whether you like the look of them or not. Now I have clearly marked my dart onto my fabric and I've also pinned it in position. Now the waist darts are what we can refer to as a contour dart. That means that they have an apex or point at both ends. So when you sew these, the method that I would use would be to stitch on to the dart all the way along and off the dart. If, however, you are new to sewing, I would recommend a slightly easier method where you start in the center of the bulk and you sew out to the apex and you complete the same for the opposite side. If you're new to sewing contour darts, then please follow the link to our corresponding tutorial where I show how to sew a contour dart in detail. Now I'm going to leave you to go and sew your contour darts if you wish to add them. You will also need to press them on completion. Now to provide your garment with a professional finish, you're going to want to finish the raw edges of the fabric. You can use a variety of different techniques and it does depend on the fabric that you're working with. You could use the overlocker or serger. If you don't have access to one of those, you could use a stitch on your sewing machine, such as a zigzag or overcast stitch. Alternatively, you could trim the seam allowances with pinking shears, or you could do a different seam, such as a French seam. Now, whatever method I'm using, I tend to plan how I'm going to construct my garment. So with this project, I'm going to be working with an overlocker or serger, and I'm going to be using three threads, so a single needle. I've opted for a narrow overlocking stitch, so I'm using my needle on the right. Now I'm going to go through and share the edges that I have currently finished on my overlocker or serger. On my back pieces, I've finished the side seam. I've also finished my center back seam, and I finished the shoulder seams. On the front pieces, I have finished the side seam and the shoulder pieces. And when I've been finishing the side seam, I've made certain to make sure that the dart or the bust darts
are going down in the direction that they've been pressed, so towards the hem. Now at this point, I haven't finished the hem of either the front or the back pieces. The reason being is that when I'm working with an overlocker or serger, or generally finishing the edges of my fabric, I want to think about the best method to make sure that I've got a really premium professional finish. So, what I will actually do is construct the side seams of my garment, and then I will finish around the bottom edge. I'll inform you when we get to that point. That just gives a nice premium finish and obviously joins all of those edges together. Now when it comes to the sleeve, I have finished the side seams of both sleeves and I've also finished across the hem edge. The reason being is that I believe you get a more professional finish finishing this seam flat rather than completing an overlocking or surging stitch around a circle once you have joined your seams on the sleeve together. I've also finished the shoulders of the front facing pieces, the shoulders of the back facing pieces and the centre back of the back facing pieces. These pieces, the front facing and back facing, have already been interfaced with a lightweight interfacing and it's a fusible interfacing, so I hid this on with the iron. I did that before finishing the shoulder seams and the centre back seam with the overlocker or serger, because again that gives a slightly neater finish. Hopefully it's clear why I wait until the bust darts have been sewn to complete my overlocking or serging. It gives a neater finish and holds the bust darts in position. The same applies for the fusible stay tape if you decided to add that to the neckline and the fusible interfacing that you should have applied to the back of the facings. By waiting until this point to overlock or serge the edges, you just get a really neat finish. If you've decided to complete another method, you may find it easier to do that once you've sewn the seams together. It's often easier to do that with a zigzag stitch on the sewing machine and using pinking shears because it won't affect the seam allowances. One thing to note if you're doing the method on the overlocker or the serger is that you must remember you're not cutting off any fabric. You don't want to reduce down the seam allowances. You're just running it through to finish the edges, not to cut anything. You may want to think about how you finish the overlocking or serger tails or threads. Now on the seams that are going to be stitched across, so by that I mean your side seams of your garment, they're going to be sewn and then actually sewn across with the serger or overlocker across the bottom. You don't need to worry about finishing the edges of these. However, your hemming, serging or overlocking, where you're not going to be finishing the edges, need to be finished neatly so that they don't unravel. What you're going to want to do is to take a needle with a large eye, a darning needle is quite good for this, and thread the overlocking or serging threads into the needle. You're then going to thread this on the wrong side, underneath the overlocking or serging stitching and just pull that through. You can then trim off the extra threads and you have a nice neat finish. So I've got my right sides of my fabric together and I'm going to start by pinning this side seam. You're going to want to match the fabric edges together. We'll start with the underarm edge and we'll pop a pin in there. Now, something to think about, when I'm sewing a seam on a garment, I will generally always sew it from the hem up. Now, when you're feeding this through the machine, you've got to think about the fabric being on the left of you, because there's more space. So, the fabric would be on the left as this was sewn through the machine, and I'd be starting at this edge and sewing up. So, my pin point is pointing to where I'm going to begin sewing so that the head of the pin will be facing me and is therefore easy to remove. So I've put one pin at the underarm edge. I'm going to slide this up and we're also going to put a pin at the bottom hem edge. So now I've positioned a pin at the hem edge. And I'd always recommend that you pop a pin at, the, at both edges of the seam that you're starting to sew. It means that you can distribute the ease evenly. 
The next step is to find the notch. So we've got a pin at the hem, we've got a pin at the underarm, and we now need to find any notches. So there's a double notch on the hip. Hopefully you can see that there. And I'm going to simply match that to the other double notch. And pop a pin in. And then I can work my way along the seam, adding pins to distribute the ease. And just make sure that the two layers are nice and flat together. You've got to remember that the body is 3D. If you're a beginner's, beginner sewer, I often get questions saying, not everything will lay flat. And that's because we aren't flat. We're not a 2D shape. So as long as the two edges are matching and that you've pinned the top and the bottom of the seam and any notches together, I'm sure all will be fine. Now you're going to begin at the hem, stitching forwards and then backwards. And you want to keep your forwards and backwards to a minimum, about two to three stitches. You're then going to work your way all the way along the seams until you get to the other end. You're simply going to be following the seam allowance marking on your machine. And the seam allowance with this pattern, if you haven't changed it, is 5 eighths of an inch, 1.5 centimetres. The edges here, the two layers of fabric, should be one on top of each other and nice and flat and you'll simply work your way along. Obviously, if you wanted to do a French seam because you're working with a lightweight fabric or the seam of your choosing, then you're more than welcome to do so. Be sure to take the pins out as you go. When you get to the other end, you're simply going to want to backstitch, again, to secure your stitching. You can then remove the fabric from your machine and trim your threads. Once you've sewn the side seam, with the majority of fabrics, you're going to want to press it open. Now you're going to want to do that with the heat and steam of the iron. And I would recommend using something like this. This is a seam roll, or you could use a rolled up towel underneath your fabric. This will help to stop the seam allowances from being embossed on the right side of your garment and also it will get you a premium crisp finish to your pressing. The next step is to sew the shoulder seam. Again, you're going to want to match the right sides of the fabric together. You're wanting to match both the edges of the fabric along the shoulder and the edges against the armhole edge and the neck edge together. I would position a pin at both ends, think about the way your fabric will travel through the sewing machine and also match any notches. Once you've pinned the shoulder, I'm going to leave you to sew that. Again, you're doing the same process that we used for the side seam. You've got a seam allowance of 5 eighths of an inch, 1.5 centimetres on this pattern unless you have changed it. Backstitch at the start and the end for security trim your seams and press open. Once you've sewn and pressed open the shoulder, you're then going to do exactly the same for the other side. You've got a side seam to sew and press and you've got another shoulder seam to sew and press. I'm going to leave you to do that. You're also going to want to prepare the sleeve. Now you're going to need to sew the seam in the sleeve and this is the underarm seam. To do this, you're going to want to fold the sleeve in half with the right sides of the fabric together. You're going to match up the two edges of fabric here, match up the bottom edge, match up the top edge, which is at the underarm, and also the notches, just like you did for the other seams. You're going to want to pin and stitch in the same manner and press open. After sewing the sleeves together, I would also recommend that you prepare the facing. Now I have got my two back facings and my front facing. They have been interfaced and the shoulder and centre back edges have been finished with the overlocker or serger. Now I'm going to stitch the shoulders together. So I'm going to position a front to a back at the shoulder. I'm going to place the right sides together, matching the edge of the fabric as well as the neckline and the end of the facing and the notches. And I'm going to pop my pins in there 
and I'm going to stitch those using the same method that you've used for the rest of your garment. Now I'm going to ask you to go and stitch those on the sewing machine. Follow the seam allowance that you're working with. If you haven't amended the pattern, it's 5 eighths of an inch, 1.5 centimeters. I would then like you to press these open as completed with the rest of the seams. Be sure to backstitch at the start and the end to secure your stitching. As you can see, I've sewn the facing front to the facing back at the shoulder seams and pressed them open. I would now recommend that you finish the outside edge of the facing all the way around from the centre back to the other centre back. Here I have used the serger or overlocker. You're welcome to use a finishing stitch on the sewing machine, pinking shears or a rolled hem. I might even take mine to the sewing machine now and just turn it under and stitch right on the edge to give a really professional finish. Now I've stitched the back to the front at the shoulder seams and the side seams on both sides and I have pressed those open. Now before we move on and start introducing the zip, I would recommend that you finish the bottom edge of your garment with the overlocker or serger. So I've, with the back being open, I've been able to go around this completely flat. And I've done mine with the overlocker or serger and I've tidied away the tails, but obviously you could use a method that works best for you. On the sewing machine, pinking shears, whatever you find easiest. So we're going to be introducing an invisible zipper. The first step that I would take is to draw your stitching line onto the right side of your fabric using chalk or removable pen. You need to measure in from the edge of the fabric the seam allowance. Now I'm working with a lightweight invisible zipper. A lightweight or a standard invisible zipper will depend on the fabric that you're working with. Now for the invisible zipper we're going to pin the first side and sew it and then we're going to pin and sew the second side. If you are new to sewing an invisible zipper, I would recommend that you watch my detailed tutorial. Learn step by step how to actually put one of these in. I've pinned the first side of the zipper in place. I would like you to stitch that on the sewing machine using your invisible zipper foot or your standard zipper foot, whichever you prefer. So as you can see, I have stitched the first side of the zipper and that is nicely in. Now I'm going to do this with the second side. So I'm going to unzip my zipper and I'm going to position the right side of my zipper onto the right side of my fabric. Again, I'd recommend you draw a line and we're going to stitch down this side. A little tip that I wanted to share with you is to adhere a small strip of interfacing down the center back where the zip is going to go on both sides. You can iron it onto the wrong side of the fabric. The strip wants to be between half an inch, 1.2 centimeters, and three quarters of an inch, two centimeters in width, depending on the seam allowance that you're working with. You must position the strip where you're going to be stitching. So as you can see, I've inserted the second side of my zip, and it fastens perfectly. Now the zip is inserted, I need to finish the bottom of the centre back seam. Now with the garment inside out, you're going to need to sew from the bottom of the centre back all the way up to the bottom of the zip and past the stitching that you completed for the zip as close to it as possible, normally about one eighth, three millimetres away and past it by a little bit so that it's nice and secure. Again, if you're new to sewing zips, then I would recommend that you watch my specific invisible zipper tutorial. I would also recommend, if you're a beginner at this, that you complete this small section first. Start approximately here and sew up to the zip. Then complete the rest of the centre back seam. Once you've done that, you can press the bottom of the seam allowance open, just like we did with the other seams, and I'm going to show you how to attach the bottom of the zip onto the seam allowance neatly. As you can see, I've stitched the centre back seam together and I've stitched up and past the bottom of my zipper. I've also pressed this open. 
Now the final thing that I would recommend you do so that you have a professional looking zipper is to attach the bottom of the zipper tape onto the seam allowance. I would recommend that you do a backwards and forwards stitch on the sewing machine on both this side and this side, so through the zipper tape and the seam allowance only. Here you can see the finished stitching on both sides of the zipper tape attaching it to the seam allowances. Now we're going to work to introduce the two sleeves into the garment. As you can see I've already sewn the underarm seam of my sleeve and we did that in a previous step. Now I generally like to finish the hem of my sleeves now, prior to installing them into the garment, I just find it a little bit more manageable. Now the only time you might not want to do this is if you are unsure about the finished length of the sleeve and you wanted to try the dress on or top on prior to actually finishing the hem. If you're happy with the length of the sleeve then I recommend that you go ahead and finish it now. It's up to you the method that you choose. You can complete a row of stitching on the sewing machine or you can do this by hand. When it comes to hemming the sleeves you've got a couple of different options and this will come down to the fabric that you're working with. Now the hem allowance on the pattern if you haven't changed it is three quarters of an inch two centimeters. You're going to want to work your way around measuring this and pinning it in place. Use a ruler or tape measure to make sure that it's really accurate and that it's the same amount all the way around and the same on both sleeves. Once you've pinned up the hem you can think about the finishing method that you want to use and this will depend on the fabric that you're working with. Now you could just create a row of stitching all the way around the bottom on the sewing machine to hold it in place and that's what I've done on this sleeve here. I've just done a row of stitching and I did this 5 eighths of an inch 1.5 centimeters from the edge of the fabric so that I made sure I caught the hem down and it was also a nice distance from the edge. The distance of stitching can vary and that's totally up to you. I would also recommend if you're doing this that you may wish to increase your stitch length. I worked with three millimeter stitch length here. Depending on the thickness of your fabric, you may find you need to increase it so that you get a nice looking stitch. If you don't want to see a row of stitching on the front of your garment, then you have some other options. You could hand stitch using a herringbone catch stitch or a slip stitch or something relatively invisible. Or you could complete a blind hemming technique on the sewing machine. Think about the look and the fabric that you're working with and make the decision accordingly. I'll leave you to hem both of the sleeves. If you're new to hemming techniques then please watch one of our more detailed videos on the technique that you're looking for. If you're planning to hem the garment later then that's not a problem, you can hem the sleeves once they have been inserted. Now we're going to be introducing the sleeves with the standard method, the set in sleeve method. Now I'm going to ask you to complete a easing or gathering stitch around the top of the sleeve cap so that we can absorb the small amount of ease that these sleeves have to fit into the armhole. Now hopefully you can see the notches on your pattern. There will be a single notch which points to the front of the sleeve and a double notch for the back of the sleeve. You're going to want to complete a long stitch length on the sewing machine, four millimeters or greater, from one notch all the way around the top of the sleeve cap to the other notch, or notches. When you do this stitch you don't want to back stitch and you also want to do it in the seam allowance. So the first row I would recommend doing half an inch 1.2 centimeters from the raw edge of the fabric. And that's because we're working with a seam allowance of 5 eighths, 1.5 centimetres. Obviously if you've changed your seam allowance you may need to amend this. Then I would do another row in between the first row and the edge of the fabric. And you want to leave nice long tails that you can pull on in a second to gather or ease the fabric. Once again if you're new to inserting sleeves then I do have a detailed tutorial which you can watch for a step-by-step -step guide.
Once you've completed your easing or gathering stitches, you're going to want to collect the two tails of thread from one side. It doesn't matter if it's from the wrong or the right side of the fabric, you just need the two from the same side. You're going to pull on those and at the same time push the fabric away and this is what will create the gathering or easing. You want to do a little bit from both sides just so that you can distribute this evenly around the top of the sleeve cap. And you want to do it until you get something looking like this. Now I generally always gather or ease a little bit too much. These sleeves have very little ease so you should find that they fit the armhole very easily. But it's always best to pull a little bit more at this stage because it's easier to let it out when introducing it onto the garment fabric rather than having to pull in a bit more. Once you've eased or gathered the top of the sleeve cap, it's now time to attach it onto the bodice of the garment. A couple of things that I need to point out. So the underarm seam of the sleeve must match the underarm seam of the bodice or the garment and I would start by pinning those together. You need to make sure that you're positioning the correct sleeve in the correct armhole. As I mentioned, a single notch is the front, a double notch is the back, and these will match the notches on the armhole. The top notch at the top of the sleeve cap is to match with the shoulder seam. So I know that this sleeve is the correct sleeve for this armhole. So I'll put the right sides of the fabric together and then I'll reach inside the garments to connect the two. So start by matching the side seam of the garment to the underarm seam of the sleeve. You're welcome to use a clover fork pin here if you would like. These can be sewn over and will help you get a perfect match. I would then pin the rest of the underarm up to the notches, which is where the easing or gathering stitches start. The next step is to match the top notch of the sleeve with the shoulder and pin that in position. Then you'll work with the easing or gathered part of the sleeve and you'll pick the center part of the sleeve and match that to the center part of the armhole, making sure that you do this as consistently as possible. Position the pins in. Once you're happy with this, you can by all means baste or tack it in place. Try it on, check that you haven't got any pleats or puckers before sewing it on the sewing machine. Once the sleeve is ready, you can take it to the sewing machine. I recommend starting in the armhole, sewing the whole of the armhole first and then up and over. You're going to be working with the seam allowance. For this project, that's 5 eighths of an inch, 1.5 centimetres, unless you've changed it, and back to a normal stitch length of 2.5 millimetres. Backstitch at the start and end for security. Now you may need to remove the table or the front section of your sewing machine to leave an arm for you to position the sleeve on. Now I'm starting one side of my underarm so that I can sew the whole of the underarm of the sleeve first and then over the top of the sleeve cap. You're simply going to work your way along following the seam allowance using a normal stitch length of 2.5 millimetres. Start with a back stitch and finish with a back stitch and just take your time removing the pins as you go. As you're sewing, just keep checking everything's very smooth and you haven't got any lumps and bumps that you're catching. I'll leave you to finish this sleeve. Remember to backstitch when you get to the end. As you can see, I've attached the sleeve onto the body of my garment. The next step will be to trim any threads and remove the easing or gathering stitches. You're going to want to do exactly the same to the other sleeve so that you've attached both sleeves onto the body of your garment. You're also going to want to think about if you wish to finish the seam allowances on the inside, the seam allowance between the garment and the body. You could finish those with the overlocker or serger, or you could complete a zigzag or overcast stitch on the sewing machine, or you could use pinking shears. It's up to you and the fabric that you're working with. So I've finished the seam allowances of my sleeve with the overlocker or serger. I did a three thread 
overlock it or serge a stitch. Um, I went around in a circle, making sure that I sewed over myself. I then tidied away the threads by threading them back through the serger or overlocker stitching. The next step is to attach the facing. You're going to position the right side of the facing unit onto the right side of the garment. I recommend that you begin by matching the shoulders. Again, if you want to, you're welcome to use the clover fork pins to hold these in place while you're sewing across them. You're then going to want to pin the whole of the neckline, making sure that you match the two edges of fabric together. So the front of my neckline and the shoulders are pinned. Now let me show you how to pin the back of the neckline. To attach the back facing onto the neckline of the garment, you're firstly going to need to open the zip. Now you're going to need to place the right side of the back facing onto the right side of the garment, again matching the edges around the neck. You can see that the shoulder is already pinned here. Now, when it comes to the centre back of the facing, you're going to need to open out the zipper so that it's completely flat. So the zip will look like this once you've opened it. You need to fold it out so that you can see the centre back of the garment. You're then going to match the centre back of the garment to the centre back of the facing. One on top of each other, matching the edge along here and the edge of the neck and then you can pop some pins in. So we're going to pin around the neck and you can also pin down the centre of the zipper tape here to hold this bit in position. Now you're going to go to the sewing machine and we're going to sew around the neckline of the garment all the way around. You're going to follow the seam allowance. The seam allowance that came with this pattern is 5 eighths of an inch, 1.5 centimetres, unless you've amended it and you're going to do a normal stitch length of 2.5 millimetres. Now if you're new to sewing facings, you may wish to draw the stitching line on, especially around the curves of the shoulders here. You may want to draw it on with just a removable pen or chalk so that you've got a guide to stitch with, and it means that it's the same on both shoulder edges of your neckline. The other really important thing to think about is that you travel across the top of the zip at the same point on both sides. This will mean that once the facing is trimmed and turned around, when you fasten the zip, the top of the zip will be the same on both sides and level. So what I generally recommend is that using a ruler, you measure from the raw edge your stitching line, the 5 eighths of an inch, 1.5 centimetres, and you draw it on. Hopefully you can see the little horizontal lines that I've drawn here. And this is my guide, so I need to aim for this when I begin and when I finish stitching. Once you've stitched around the neck, the first step is to check that the zip matches. So, fasten the zipper and double check across where the facing is that everything matches. If not, then unfortunately you will need to remeasure unpick one or both sides and restitch. The next step is to stitch down the centre of the zipper tape, attaching the facing onto the garment at the centre back edge, so down here. Now you're matching the two edges, the centre back of the facing to the centre back of the garment, and we'll pop a pin in there. You're stitching from the bottom of the facing to the top, back stitch at the start and at the end through the center of the zipper tape. You may need to use a zipper foot on the machine for ease. So I've stitched down the center of the zipper tape, attaching the facing onto the garment at the center back. The final step is something I've already done on this side and this is going to give a really professional finish. What you need to do is to roll the zip onto the right side of the fabric. So we're going to fold it over like so. As you can see, both sides will be folded in opposite directions because they're opposites. And you really want the edge of the zipper to be in this creased area here. Now what you're going to do is to stitch along the top on the same row of stitching that you stitched previously. This is really important because you should have already checked that the zip matched at the top. We don't want that to change. 
Pop a pin to hold that in place, take it to the machine, and I'll show you how to do this. Now this is a slightly more complex technique. If you are new to sewing a facing, then please, you don't need to necessarily stitch down the centre back to attach the facing onto the garment or do this step. There are easier methods, all of which I cover in my facing tutorial, where we do the whole of this process in a much slower and easier to understand manner. Stitch forwards and backwards to start, and then stitch over the folded zip on the same stitching line that you used previously. Take the pin out when you get there so that you don't hit that, and when you get to the end you can backstitch. Once you've sewn both of the top of the zips, then the next step is to do some grading and clipping. Now this depends on the fabric that you are working with. However, you will probably always need to trim this a little bit. 5 eighths of an inch, 1.5 centimetres is too great a seam allowance to leave. So, at the very minimum, I would recommend trimming the whole thing down to approximately a quarter of an inch, 5 millimetres. Now, if your fabric is quite bulky, it may benefit from grading as well. That means that we're going to trim down the two layers, or stagger them, should I say. Now, when you're grading, you always need to trim down the facing to the smaller amount. So we're trimming the facing to 1 8 3 millimetres, and leaving the body of the fabric to a quarter of an inch, 5 millimetres. You're also going to want to trim off the corner of the zip so that we can turn this around and get a neat finish. You will probably find it easier to trim down both layers to a quarter of an inch, five mil first, and then work your way around trimming the facing smaller to the one eighth, three mil, if you need that. So I finished trimming and grading my seam allowances. Now you may also need to clip into the curve. Take a small pair of scissors and place cuts straight down into the seam allowance around the curved sections. I personally stagger mine between the seam allowance to avoid causing a point of weakness. You only need to do this on the really curved areas. To finish the facing, you will need to complete a row of understitching. The understitching will stop the facing being visible from the right side of the garment. You need to stitch on the facing approximately 1 16th to 1 8th away from the seam that join the facing to the body. That's 2 to 3 millimetres. When you complete this, you must make sure that you stitch on top of the seam allowances. So you push those towards the facing. Due to the way that we finish the zip with the professional finish, you're going to need to sew as close to the zip as you can on both sides. So start as close as possible, sew all the way around, and then I would check how far away you've started so that you can finish at the same point so it looks symmetrical. Once you finish the facing, you're going to want to press it in position. Press from the facing side, making sure that you can see three millimeters, one eighth of the right side of the fabric, so that you can't see any of the facing from the right side of the garment. So the facing is nicely pressed in position. Now there are two things left to finishing the neckline of this garment. The first thing is to attach the facing down so that it doesn't keep popping up. The pressing and understitching will have done most of that, but it would be also a good idea to attach it down at the shoulder seams. To do this, open the zipper and get to one of the shoulder seams. Now, what we want to do here is to attach the facing to the shoulder seam of the garment. And you've got two options. You can do that on the sewing machine or by hand. Now we want to try and line up the shoulder seam of the facing directly on top of the shoulder seam of the garment. So that they're nicely positioned in place. Now, if you're working on the sewing machine, what you're going to want to do is to stitch through the facing and only through the seam allowance on the shoulder. We don't want to catch the front of the garment here. 
I would recommend that you stitch towards the seam and it's just a little backwards and forwards, it's just holding this in place. And I would do that for both sides, so for this side and the other side of the seam allowance, attaching them to the facing. And you'll also need to do it to the other shoulder. If you don't want to do it on the sewing machine or perhaps you're a bit more of a beginner sewer, then I would recommend that you do this by hand instead. And you'll simply do a bar tack by hand, so an in-out stitch, to hold this in place. Again, I have detailed tutorials showing you how to do this, so please do watch those if this is your first time. So I've pinned the facing in place through the seam allowance. Just make sure that you don't pull it too much from the neck edge here. Just let it sit nice and flat. I'll briefly show you how to do this on the sewing machine. But again, if you are new to this or want a more detailed tutorial, then I have specific tutorials available. Now you just want to stitch through the facing and into the seam allowance. And I'm actually aiming to stitch on top of the stitching line that I completed at the bottom edge of my facing to finish that off neatly. And then you won't really be able to see this. Couple of stitches forwards, couple of stitches backwards, and then couple of stitches forwards again. Just a little bar tack or backwards and forwards to hold it in place. Now one of the final things you're going to need to do is to hem the garment. You may wish to try it on to check the length first. Now if you're working with the instructions of this pattern, the hem allowance is three quarters of an inch or two centimetres. You're going to want to measure that and press that towards the wrong side. Place some pins to hold the hem allowance in position. Now it's up to you the technique that you use to stitch this in place. And I would recommend that you do the same thing that you did with your sleeves. You can, on the sewing machine, complete a straight stitch all the way around. If you're going to do that, I would recommend completing the stitch approximately 5 eighths, 1.5 centimetres from the edge, so that you catch the majority of the hem allowance. That obviously will be visible on the right side of the garment. I generally increase my stitch length if I'm doing that. I completed a 3mm stitch length for this project, but you will want to check it on the fabric that you're using. Now if you don't want to see stitching on the right side of your garment, you've got a couple of other options. You could complete a hand stitch, you could do a herringbone catch stitch or a slip stitch by hand, or you could complete a blind hem on the sewing machine. If you're new to any of these techniques, then please do watch our specific tutorials. Now I'm going to go and complete a straight stitch around the bottom for my hemming technique. If you haven't hemmed your sleeves, I would recommend that you do that now as well. Once you've finished sewing the hem of your garment and sleeves, no matter what method you used, I would recommend giving them a nice press so that you've got a crisp finish. The final step is to trim any of the threads that you find remaining on your garment. Now that the shoulders of the facing are attached, the facing should sit nicely in position. Now one final thing that you might want to do to the neckline of the garment, and this is optional, is to attach a hook and eye. Now you may want to attack a hook and eye at the top of the zip. It depends really on how you've introduced your zip, have you got too much space up there, are you worried that it might come undone so you want to add a hook and eye as an extra bit of security. If you haven't sewn a hook and eye before, then again I have a detailed tutorial that will show you how to place them and also how to sew them with a secure stitch, a buttonhole stitch. My zip is nice and high and although I could add a hook and eye, I don't think I really need to with this project. And here you can see the top of the zip from the back of the garment. The edges meet nicely across the top and it's a nice and high finish. I don't have space really above the zip. And there you have it, your finished dress or top. I really hope you enjoyed the tutorial and that you feel able to make a professional looking garment at home. I hope you like the cope and pattern and as always I'd really appreciate any feedback that you have. Thank you for watching, thank you for making one of my patterns and I wish you all the best with your sewing.